just a wonderful guy. He, you know, you couldn't find a better, a better image for your player. Great leader, great coach. I call him the Virginia gentleman. Had a really good ability to handle players. You wanted to do well for him, I guess is the best description of it. I always feel that he's a better person than he was a coach. If somebody were to ask me, what, what did Terry Holland teach you? Uh, I think I would say, very simply, there's always another way. Terry Holland's college basketball journey started at Davidson College in the early 1960s under legendary coach Charles Lefter Giselle. Holland served as captain on the 1964 squad and stayed on as an assistant coach under Giselle when his playing days were over. Five years later, in 1969, Lefty moved on to the University of Maryland and Holland was promoted to head coach for his alma mater. When I was eligible uh, first year as a, as a player for him, probably gave me a good idea of what it was like to play for him because he pushed you. And as an assistant coach, he pushed you as well. Uh, his approach to things was the harder you work, the luckier you get. I think I learned more from doing scouting reports on opposing teams because you learned a lot about the other team, then you'd bring it back and then sit down with Coach Drizell and whoever the other assistants were at that particular time, and you'd break it down, but you learned a lot of basketball that way. So I have to say that I learned almost all my basketball from Coach Drizell. In 1974, Bill Gibson left the University of Virginia for the head coaching job at South Florida. The Hoos needed a coach to raise the overall profile of the basketball program in the highly competitive ACC. Someone that could be successful against the likes of Dean Smith, Norm Sloan, and ironically, Lefter Giselle. Whoever got the job was going to have their work cut out for them. Gene Cargan was recruiting me for the University of Virginia, I guess is the best way to put it. I had no real interest in the University of Virginia at that particular time. And I said, well, you know, I can, I can stop in Charlottesville for a few hours, take a look, and go on up to New York and don't miss anything. So I said, I'll stop. And I was intrigued by Gene particularly. He came in on a Saturday. I don't know where he came from. He drove up and uh, he was at Davidson at the time. Had his own style. Play was not an exciting basketball team, but he knew how to coach defense and and uh, he, he handled stars very well. And I looked at Virginia and I said, well, you know, it is the state school. A at Davidson, we're, we're going to be pushing hard to be the fifth best school in terms of media coverage and that type of thing in the state. The more I looked at it, the more I said, this seems to make a lot of sense. Uh, so I thought Virginia was a good move. I remember looking at him and I said, well, do you want the job? And he said, yeah. I said, well, you got it. You could do that in those days. Gene did a great job of selling. He showed me the lawn and what the university was all about. And I said, well, this is just a big Davidson, isn't it? And he said, yes, it is. <laughs> that was a pretty good hire, though. I think, in fact, I think that was a very good hire. The 75 Virginia team was not loaded with stars. In fact, it was the opposite. At that time, to be honest, we'd been picked not to win a single ACC game that year. So we knew that we were up against it. We had to be ready. We're going to recruit the best players in the state. We're not going to just let them go somewhere else. And that we're still going to recruit nationally. We established a mentality, a toughness that, that bode well for Virginia basketball through the years. Terry Holland came in. I had some kind of a reputation then. I, I think, you know, mostly good, maybe not all good. But he thought he was getting a, you know, a pretty good player. But I wasn't healthy. Uh, so our team wasn't very good. We worked their tails off. We really did. It was tough on them. By the end of the year, we were a good basketball team. And even though NC State was a great basketball team, uh, we fought them hard and did get down by 22. And then Billy Packer saying, this is a waste of time. This is getting ridiculous. We were, and all of a sudden, uh, with about uh, four minutes to play, uh, we were closing the gap. And then all of a sudden, it got down to like seven or eight. And Billy said, you know, this wasn't such a bad idea after all. Under a minute. If the Cavaliers can score, they will tie the Wolfpack after trailing by 22.
But Walker is heartbreakingly short, and the Virginia comeback dies. It sort of established the credibility that, that we had a great blue-collar bunch of guys who were going to work hard and would never give up regardless of what the score was and then no matter who they were playing. And he called us in the locker room after the game and said, you guys have earned a lot of respect. Next year we're going to come back here and win this title. And he said it, I'm not sure we believed him then, because yeah, we had a long way to go, but he planted the seed that, hey, we, we could succeed at Virginia. Wally Walker was one of the key ingredients to building the program in Holland's early years. He was a star that would lead Virginia on one of the most unlikely runs in ACC tournament history. Legacy Terry Holland continues after this. The 76 tournament was one of those special things. Uh, when we went into the tournament, I sat down with our team and I said, we are the best team for 120 minutes. In spite of the fact that we did not have a great record and finished sixth in the league that year out of seven teams. As the ACC's 23rd annual showdown begins, the big question is, can any team survive? Three grueling games in three days and the challenge of top seeded North Carolina. We hadn't beaten uh, Maryland, North Carolina State in my entire four years at Virginia. But we still thought we were going to the tournament, thought we, we, we could and should beat those teams. I'm not sure why we thought that, but uh, credit goes to Coach Holland there as well, because he gave us the confidence that, despite the fact we had not, that we could. We did jump out to a big lead against NC State and then control the game pretty much the whole time, so it wasn't a close game. The Maryland team was the toughest for us to play in the semis. They, they had terrific speed. They had the three-guard lineup with Lucas and Davis and those guys. We felt that we had to really control the tempo. We had to make sure that we got a good shot with floor balance every time so that we could get on the boards. We couldn't concede the boards to them, but we had to have people back ready to get back on defense. You have to have the ball. Every time they miss a shot, you've got to get the basket. We played defense with our offense, and we played defense with our defense, and we did everything we could to shut down their high-powered attack. The Virginia Cavaliers pull off their second shocking upset as they knock off ninth-ranked Maryland, 73-65, to and gain their first championship game berth in the ACC's 23-year history. To be honest, going into the North Carolina game in the championship, the only question in my mind was could we last? for another 40 minutes because we were playing our third 40 minutes within 48 hours. And in those days, because there were only seven teams in the league, North Carolina had had a bye. So they were playing only their second game. And I thought fatigue did become a factor late in the game. We had never played three games in three nights before. So Billy Langlo was my roommate. We both looked at each other that afternoon and said, how are we gonna get these legs going tonight to, to try it again? Uh, but uh, we did, and we were, we were pretty loose and, and confident. We were able to sort of hang on like a punch drunk fighter. But we did win it, and it was a, I had no idea that it was going to be the last for some 25 or so years. Virginia's victory did prove once again the Atlantic Coast Conference Tournament is the most frenzied, unpredictable three days of pressure basketball anywhere. Now that Virginia was on the basketball map, it fueled Holland's recruiting and led to UVA's next great player, Jeff Lamp. Well, Lamp was the first really all-American player that we recruited, a guy who could really do a little bit of everything and was a terrific scorer and was not from our general area, our general recruiting area. Kentucky was sort of a new area for us and to be able to go into Kentucky and get a player of his caliber and of course Lee Raker, his teammate, those two guys uh, with the heart and soul of our team for the next four years. Playing in the ACC, you know, it's, it's what I consider to be the top level and to take a program that had some con success and consistent success, but to kind of bring it into national prominence, uh, that was a big challenge for me. Uh, I thought I would be able to play a fair amount right away, which was also a big deal for me because I wanted to be out there playing. Jeff was probably as great a clutch player as the ACC has ever seen. If the, if the game was on the line, you wanted the ball in his hands. The thing I take the most pride in is being there at the end of the game, you know, being willing to take the last shot. You, know, you work hard for 40 minutes, and, and, or 39, and you don't want uh, you know, the last minute to go badly after you've put so much effort into the first 39. In 1977, Virginia finished the regular season tied for last in the standings, and like in 76, the Cavaliers went on a run in the ACC tournament. I guess the, the best way to describe it is we had some injuries during the year. When we left home among the coaching staff, we didn't tell the players this. We said, you know what, if we just had a little more time, 
we could probably pull it off again. We, we did a, a great job getting to the championship game and control the game through the first half and well into the second half. And at the time, I think we were something like 21 for 22 from the free throw line. I mean, we were making our free throws, we were executing, and down the stretch, I think we were one for six, and several of those were one, one and one, so we ended up losing that lead, mainly because we couldn't make free throws. Carolina was fouling us, uh, we were tired, and I think that's where the fatigue really showed was at the free throw line. We just couldn't quite get it up there. All those shots were hitting the front of the rim, but that was a great effort, and we realized how very tough it is to, to play in a championship game, even much less win one. In 1979, every school in the country wanted the highly touted seven foot four center Ralph Sampson, a once in a lifetime talent. Coming to Virginia was a possibility, but it was not a done deal. The decision would go down to the wire. I think it came down to in the long term, if I play at Virginia, all these people who've supported me these years here in Harrisonburg will be able to see me play, particularly my family members. So. Um, I think I'm going to Virginia. And those are the exact words he used. I think I'm going to Virginia, which is not exactly what I wanted to hear. We had a press conference. I walked in and told him, and I spent some time that day by myself and said I was going to Virginia because of the qualifications, being close to home, a good school, they needed a center. It was definitely down to actually Virginia and Carolina and Kentucky and Virginia Tech that day. I could have went to any one of those schools. Everybody in the country knew that he was the tops and all of a sudden he's coming to Virginia he's not going to North Carolina he's not going to Kentucky you know he's not going to Duke he's going he's coming to Virginia and this was this was a huge huge thing when Ralph announced that he was coming to the University of Virginia we're thinking oh we got him now what do we do with him <laughs> 1979 was an adjustment year for the program UVA adjusting to the national attention of Ralph Sampson on campus and the team learning how to play together with this larger than life talent that was a learning season for all of us. Uh, Ralph led, led the uh, country in block shots at that time, and we had to change that because he was in foul trouble a lot trying to, trying to set those records, not necessarily thinking of it in terms of a record, but in terms of that's what I do best is block shots. We finally convinced him that the threat of the block shot was actually much more important because he wouldn't get uh, fouls in that situation. He'd be playing a lot more minutes, and, and we continued to work on that, and his, actually, uh, his block shots went down considerably. Ralph was a guy that could do it all on the basketball court. You know, he could shoot from the outside, he was good at posting up, he could run, he could jump, he could block shots, you know, he could do everything. And it took us a while to get, to figure out how to interact with a player you know, who was that big and could do that many things. We struggled. Ralph's first year because it was hard to get everything kind of working the way he wanted to. We had to change and you know he had to change he things did and we had to change things we did and you know it coalesced at the end of the year but it took a while. By the end of the year we were starting to play a lot better and really turned it on in the, uh, the NIT tournament back when the NIT was a very very strong tournament. It, it was kind of thing that just some momentum built. We won our first couple of games and it was a real catalyst for us. It kind of set the tone for the next season where we ended up in the Final Four. So for us it was a really positive experience and we got to the point where we were able to fill some of the expectations that were placed on us. We went in the NIT championship against some very good teams and the final game against Minnesota they had several pros starting for them at that time. So it ended up being a, a really good stepping stone for us for that next season. Legacy Terry Holland continues after this. Even with a win in the 1980 NIT, there were still plenty of doubters that felt the Cavaliers didn't have the depth to carry the program to the NCAA tournament the following year. Well, not only did Holland's team prove the doubters wrong, but Virginia would start the 81 season with 23 straight wins and achieve a number one national ranking. Everybody said Virginia's dead. They've had a terrible recruiting class at a time when they needed to improve their team. And we thought we got exactly what we needed that we needed quickness, that we needed to become a much faster team. And that uh, 81 team was fast. I mean, we, we had the ability to get after people at both ends of the floor, and we could gamble because we had the eraser back there. And Ralph Sampson, who now was mature, who wasn't fouling, who was maintaining position, making people shoot over him. We, I think for the first time, we're really thinking that we deserve to be at the top. We should be looking at a national championship. 
We should be looking at winning the ACC championship. The thing that was great was that we felt like that's where we should be. This very comfortable feeling that we walked out every, you know, very confident that, you know, we could pretty much win every game, or at least that's, you know, we felt very confident in what we can do and what we couldn't do. Despite all the regular season success, the Cavs' postseason Achilles heel was Al Wood of North Carolina. Once you get there, you want to win the whole thing. And of course, we were playing the team that we'd beaten twice during the year uh, in North Carolina. I uh, wanted a shot at Indiana or whoever came out of that other bracket. And North Carolina played a terrific game. Al Wood was on fire. They were really ready for us in the, the final four. Playing the, them or any of the other teams 10 times, we were the better team. The most well-rounded, most dominant player. And I think we just got caught up in a situation where this was our first time there, first time we'd experienced that level of success. And sometimes it takes being there and getting beat or not being successful to learn how to win. And I think that's kind of where we were at that point. It's, it's hard to beat somebody three times. And yeah, would I have played somebody else? Sure, you know, that would have been much easier, but yeah, you, that's the way it worked. So that's how you play. We wanted to play in the end and we looked forward to that. And then we had this guy named Al Wood kind of take us out a little bit. So it was disappointing, but we were happy that we were able to get there with the team that we had because that's what I wanted to do when I got to Virginia. And the Virginia guys that were there before me, the Jeff Lamp, the Lee Rakers, had the opportunity because they were seniors to do that also. It was sweet getting there, but again, once you get there, you want to be able to win. And our focus changed during that era. It changed from trying to be ready for the ACC tournament to trying to be ready for the NCAA tournament. During the 1981-82 season, the Hoos went 30-4 and, and were ranked in the top three nationally. They were a force. Once again, UNC stood between UVA and postseason glory in a game that would forever change college basketball. It was one of those games where you really don't coach much. Both teams were playing so well and it was back and forth and we led by two, Carolina led by two. I mean, it was one of those just games where you say, this is what college basketball is all about. Uh, we were actually a little bit surprised that we were able to stay with them. We had beaten them fairly handily at our place. The Four Corners actually was an offense that had been very successful for North Carolina. But we had had a lot of success just playing very solid against it. What they wanted to do, obviously, was get Sampson out of the lane. Uh, what we wanted to do was make sure Sampson was around the basket. Now, unfortunately, they had Michael Jordan, <laughs> who was the guy controlling the ball at that time, and he, you know, he, he made the plays down the stretch. The games like that are fun in retrospect. Uh, they're not fun while you're out there, you know, come on guys, let's play. You know, you're scared or what? Let's play, let's do this thing right now. We were worried about getting through it with our substitution pattern without Wilson. So we said, this is going to work out all right. It's going to be a close game. We're going to have a chance to win. That's what you want in the ACC championship game. And as it ended up again, uh, Michael Jordan made some terrific plays and we ended up losing the game. But I do think that game established once and for all that uh, we probably needed a shot clock. Legacy Terry Holland continues after this. Going into his senior year, Samson had a big decision to make stay in Charlottesville or leave early to play professionally in the NBA. No, I've made my decision. I want to stay in school. I'm going to finish my degree. Yeah, I was very proud of him. I was particularly proud of the way he did it because every year he talked to everybody. He, he made sure that he was making a good decision. I enjoy the college life. I enjoy the atmosphere I was having a ball. Uh, I wanted to achieve, I wanted to win a championship uh, at that level. So that always baited me to go back and come back and do it again. It was a very difficult decision. Yes, I, I, I pondered it for weeks and weeks at a time. And I told him going into a senior season, I said, Ralph, the one thing I cannot, the position that I cannot be put into is trying to protect your status as a draftee. Because it's a great story that you've been the player of the year for two years in a row. But let's face it, the media's getting tired of that story. It's going to be an even better story if somebody comes along and beats you out for player of the year this year. But make sure you're coming back for the right reasons. And he said, no, I'm coming to get my education. That's the main thing. I want to do all these other things. I'm going to try to do them. But if I don't, if I don't get those things, I can live with that. Fortunately, I made the right decisions, I feel, being through time for college player of the year and all that kind of stuff that was awarded to me and, and having education to fall back on instead of going to the NBA and playing and and doing the things that may have happened at that particular time. I, who knows where I would have ended up. 
In 1983, Virginia was laser focused on one goal, win a national championship. Everyone thought this would be the year that the Cavaliers would finally break through. We were a very good basketball team that was growing with every single game and, and you like a team like that. Sometimes you reach your peak early in the year and there's not much you can do about it. You don't want to say let's get worse for a while so we can rebuild again. But you know you like to have a team that is growing and getting better and better at, with every game and that was a team that was doing that. Boys and girls we played all year. Preseason, regular season in this tournament and now we're down to it. And while the championship was important to us it was mainly important to us because Ralph had not played on a an ACC tournament championship team and we wanted him to have that added to his resume before he left Virginia. So we were really playing that championship game for Ralph because you know, we were going to be in the NCAA tournament and fairly high seed regardless of what happened in that championship game. Uh, and we just ran into that miracle finish uh, twice. We got to see NC State twice during that stretch. That was, a, that was a tough one for us, I mean, there's no question about it. But again, I felt sorry for our seniors, uh, particularly Ralph, knowing that that's what everybody would always say about it, they'd always be that asterisk, didn't win the national championship. Samson was gone. Prospects for the 1984 team didn't appear to be very good. What was life after Ralph going to be like? Well, that, that was a, a lot of fun because again, it was a team that wasn't expected to do much but they came together and played extremely well. They played hard and good bunch of kids. So it, it was a, uh, a team that took advantage of, of that opportunity and really played well at, at tournament time. It ended up, we ended up with a seven seed and, and took advantage of it, took advantage of that, that new life that the NCAA committee gave us. Uh, won a close game early, then won a terrific game against uh, Arkansas, who was a great basketball team. And then by that time, we had confidence again. When we went down to play Syracuse, after looking at the game films, there was no doubt in our mind that we would win that game. Now the problem was North Carolina <laughs> was on the other side of that bracket. And there was also no way we could beat North Carolina. <laughs> They'd gone undefeated in the league that year. But uh, Bobby Knight in Indiana did that for us, and we ended up with another trip to the Final Four, and quite honestly, probably should have been in the championship game. And then on the last possession, uh, Elijah Wan just made a terrific defensive play. I mean, we had the basket, it was there. And somehow he managed to get a hand and knocked them all away at the last second. So we lost in overtime. After 16 years guiding Virginia as head coach, Holland decided to change direction in 1990. He moved into administration serving as the athletic director at Davidson, Virginia, and East Carolina. When he left his post as head coach, Holland was only 47 years old, yet he left as the winningest coach in Virginia history with 326 victories. That record stood for 33 years until current coach Tony Bennett passed him. As for Holland's legacy? He's not overly aggressive, he's not only aggressive. Uh, he, think, he thinks all the time, but I, I call him you know, basically a Virginia gentleman. He is a Southern gentleman, but he's got a sneaky uh, uh, side to him, too. He's got a sneaky sense of humor. He, he, he's a practical joker. He was a, a great coach just because he was able to deal with all kinds of personalities. I mean, we were not the easiest bunch as a group. You wanted to do well for him, I guess, is the best description of it. If you played a name game and you said Virginia basketball, uh, there's only two names that could come up. One would be Ralph Sampson and the other would be Terry Holland, and more likely than not, Terry Holland's name would be first. <laughs>